The time is World War II, or precisely 1944. We see a lot of American soldiers who intend to attack Germany. Before that, there are paratroopers who are the front guard. Some of the soldiers, such as Boyce, Tibbet, who is talkative, and Chase the photographer, and Captain Ford. The task of this squad is to go to a village called Seal Blanc in France to destroy a Nazi radio tower that is located in a church. If they succeed in destroying it, then all the American ground and air forces will be able to enter Germany through France. At night, they start entering the French territory and are immediately shot by the Nazi soldiers. Before the plane is completely destroyed, all the soldiers have to jump. Although they survive the crash, Boyce is now in the middle of the enemy territory. From the many soldiers who were brought, we see that many also died even before touching the ground. Not long after walking, Boyce, who is hiding, meets Ford. They see a sergeant that is discovered and has to die by being shot by the Nazi soldiers. Despite the chaotic situation, they both have to complete the mission. On the way to the village of Seal Blanc, they meet other surviving soldiers, including the talkative Tibbet, Chase, and Dawson. With the increase of the surviving soldiers, the chance of success of this mission becomes bigger. But unfortunately, one of them lost his life when he stepped on a landmine. They have to be careful not to step on it and avoid another explosion. Here, Ford looks the most upset because of the recent incident. He is only a civilian who volunteered for the war. But suddenly, a girl who is walking in the middle of the forest appears. Luckily, this girl named Chloe is from the village of Seal Blanc and is willing to take them there. From the outside, we see the church where the radio tower is located right behind the village. They have to sneak in because many Nazi soldiers occupy the village. But suddenly, Chloe is caught by a neighbor because she is known to have gone out at night and will be arrested by the local soldiers. But then the leader of the soldiers, Captain Waffner, comes and lets her go. They are finally allowed to take shelter in Chloe's house, where she lives with her aunt, who is sick, and her younger brother named Paul. By using the attic, they plan to bomb the radio tower. Chloe tells them that many villagers have been taken to the church by force and never returned. As usual, Tibbet, who is talkative, thinks that this mission is impossible because they are only four people plus Boyce and Chase, who are only volunteers, because they don't want to bother. Ford orders Tibbet and Chase to patrol around the village. Meanwhile, Boyce, who is curious, approaches Aunt Chloe's room because he hears a scary sound, and when he checks, he sees that the aunt has become a monster. She tells him that her aunt turned into a monster since she was taken to the church because according to the news, there are human experiments being done there using a mysterious black mud. This also happened to Chloe's parents, who never came out of there. And in the middle of their conversation, Waffner and some of his men come to visit. Boyce and Ford can only watch from the attic where Waffner likes Chloe a lot, who is the only girl left in the village. Paul unexpectedly drops a ball and some of the men go to check it out. But luckily they don't go up because Paul stops them on the stairs. Then Waffner, with cunning, threatens to take Paul if Chloe doesn't want to have fun with him. Because she has no other choice, Chloe reluctantly agrees to his request. Boyce, who sees her suffering, finally comes out and makes Waffner powerless. Ford plans to kidnap him so that he can get important information and tells Boyce to look for Tibbet and Chase. As ordered, Boyce immediately looks for them by following some alleys until he approaches the church complex. From there, he sees many villagers who have become experimental subjects of a professor. And because the results are failures, they are burned right away. Boyce, who intends to go back and report this, almost gets caught by a truck that passes by. But suddenly a dog appears and chases him. He is forced to get on the truck, which turns out to contain many corpses, where the corpses are taken to the church. Because he can't get out, Boyce decides to explore the place, which is more like a laboratory for experiments. And sure enough, he sees the professor studying his experimental results. Then, after it is safe, Boyce continues to walk and finds a radio room, which is his main mission. When he explores the laboratory deeper, Boyce finds things that are beyond reason. And according to Chloe, there is a mysterious black mud that is then pumped and produces a red serum. The serum is then put into a syringe, and Boyce takes it. As he continues to walk, he finds his fellow soldier named Jacob, who hasn't been experimented on. Before escaping, they see the professor using the serum on a corpse, which turns out to make it alive. After that, they hurry out of there, 
where Boyce finds a sewerage. On the other side, Tibbet and Chase have returned to the attic to guard Waffner, who is being held hostage. Soon, Boyce arrives with Jacob and tells them that under the church, the Nazis are doing human experiments using a serum, and Boyce managed to take one. Ford immediately interrogated Waffner about the serum, but he chose to remain silent because he was only assigned to guard the professor. They still needed information, so Ford decided to beat him up. After he finished beating him, he got the info that there were 40 soldiers inside. The plan was that Boyce would lure them out of the church so that Ford and Chase could sneak in and plant the bomb. Then, Chase approached Waffner, who was also going to be taken away. But suddenly he rebelled and managed to shoot Chase. The other friends immediately came to try to help, but it was too late. Chase died. Boyce, who saw the professor use the serum, finally injected it into Chase's body. They were shocked because Chase came back to life. Waffner told them that they used the serum to revive zombie soldiers, and sure enough, Chase's body slowly changed. They then tried to kill him, but it turned out that shooting him was not enough to kill him, and the only way was to smash his head until it was crushed. In the chaos, Waffner took the opportunity to kidnap Paul. There was a fierce shootout to save him. Although one shot hit Waffner, he still managed to escape. Chloe asked for their help to save her brother before he became a victim of the experiment. Ford finally decided to save Paul first, and then blow up the place. On the other side, Waffner, who was severely wounded by the shot, injected himself with a high dose of the zombie serum, and instantly healed, with a face that was already ruined. Meanwhile, Ford devised a plan where Tibbet and Jacob would lure the soldiers out, while the rest would enter the church through the sewer that Boyce had used before. The plan began, where Chloe lured one soldier to chase her. After she subdued him, they took him to the gate with a condition tied to a motorcycle, and when the others approached, it turned out that the soldier had been fitted with a bomb. Meanwhile, Tibbet and Jacob kept luring the soldiers. Ford and the others managed to sneak in. Here, Chloe decided to look for her brother herself, while the two of them immediately carried out the mission, which was to destroy the radio tower. Along with that, Chloe met some soldiers and threatened them to show her where her brother was. She was directed to a prison, and luckily Boyce arrived just in time before Chloe was attacked. They continued to enter the laboratory and finally found Paul. Chloe was told to go home because the place was going to be bombed. But when she was about to leave, a zombie came and attacked her. After she killed the zombie, she went back to the village. In the village itself, Tibbet and Jacob were still busy shooting. However, Paul innocently ran to the middle of the battlefield, and Tibbet immediately secured him even though he had to be shot. Scene returned to the church where Boyce, who was busy setting up bombs, was suddenly threatened by the professor. Here, a little fight occurred where the professor was finally killed quite easily. On the other hand, Ford, who was doing the same thing, was visited by Waffner, who immediately beat him up. Thanks to the zombie serum, Waffner could not be killed easily and would take revenge because he had been beaten in the attic before. Of course, Shooting would not be able to kill him, and now it was Boyce's turn to be bullied. Seeing his friend powerless, Ford tried to help and decided to use the zombie serum. Before he really became a zombie, he fought with all his might, even though Waffner still won. Not lacking in intelligence, he used a gas cylinder that exploded when shot. When they were about to leave, it turned out that Ford decided to sacrifice himself by blowing up the laboratory. He also advised Boyce not to tell the Americans about this experiment. The explosion triggered the other bombs, and Boyce hurried out before the place was destroyed. Thanks to the collapse of the radio tower, the American ground and air forces could easily go to Germany to help slaughter the Nazi troops. Boyce, who managed to return, could not say anything seeing his friend sacrifice himself. Not long after, American reinforcements arrived and according to Ford's message, Boyce did not tell anything about the zombie experiment to his superiors. This was done so that America itself would not do the same to go to war. Now they finally managed to complete their mission, but instead of being able to go home, they got another mission to help the frontline troops to defeat Hitler, and the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.